Hi everyone, this is Dr. Vega V. Solanke, aka VMD. Everybody has been asking, how do I find programs? What do I use? What are your sources, especially for IMGs? Trust me, I know the struggle, but that's why I'm here to help you guys. So this video is gonna go through how I found programs and also how I researched a lot about program eligibility, requirements, and all of that fun stuff that everybody wants to know at this time of the application season. As always, video timeline is in the link below. You guys know what to do. Comment, like, share, subscribe, and without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. To make sure you have your golden tier list of the programs that you want to apply for, yes, they can be expensive, and that's why it's important for you guys to research the program well in advance. If you haven't already, right now that the token just opened, this is the best time to start looking for programs because if you have your list in advance, then all you have to work on is your ERAS application, and it's going to go smooth sailing from there if you start early, aka if you start now. This video is going to talk about the three sources I use. I use Frida, which is AAMC's database on programs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a screen share going through how I personally use Frida and how I did it last year. The second source I'm going to talk about is Residency Explorer. This is also a database where you're going to put in your personal information and make an account. It's the same as ERAS. And you're going to put in your step scores, your number of experiences, publications, etc. And it's going to show your ranking percentile wise compared to the programs and what programs you're eligible for that way. The third resource that I use I'm going to talk about is Match a Resident, which which personally for me worked out great. It was a low fee subscription for the entire year. If I remember correctly, I got Match a Resident around end of June, early July when I was referred to it from a friend. He told me about it, he had used Match a Resident and I looked into it, I loved it and I bought the subscription. But I will explain more of that when we get to that. All right guys, let's get right into this. So you're on the frida.ama slash assn.org. When you log in, you can see right up at the top, there's the COVID-19 resources for you guys applying this year. Um, so you can hit stay informed here for more. You can sign in here to save, um, you know, the programs that you're looking at. But in order to do that, you need a members you need a membership to AMA. So you can check that out here. So when you log in, this is what Frida shows you. Again, you can you know, do the residency calculator here, which actually there is an Excel sheet that you can download for free. And there's a bunch of cool things on here. So let's just give my example, right? When I was applying last year, um, I applied to internal and family. So I can look up internal medicine. When we see, when we log into internal medicine, you see 565, right? And you want to make sure you're hitting residencies, not fellowships. There's a list of these things on the side are basically your parameters that you're going to be using to evaluate which programs are going to be fit for you and not. I'm going to act like this is exactly how I'm doing it and how I did it last year. So for me, I would, you know, hit internal medicine here. The locations, if you have specific locations, this is a great place. It goes through all of the states as oops, as well as, um, you know, if you're looking for east, west, whatever it is. But for this sake, let's just, you know, try to eliminate 565 down to my list, not worrying about geographic location. Application info here, I didn't even touch much of this. And, you know, complex is if you're a DO, US Emily is if you're MD. So I didn't even, I honestly didn't even touch much of this. Um, because remember, you're going to go through each of these websites after as well. Program type, if you, you know, have a preference, university, community-based, military-based, um, DO recognition, then you can go through that. Special tracks, again, I didn't do much of this. So these three, I didn't click much. I did go through locations here. For myself, I was going to be on a J-1 visa, so I hit J-1, and you see automatically that brings it down to 383 programs, and remember, this is just hypothetical based on my own portfolio. This is a part that's really important, and I want to really like highlight it here. I'm going to zoom in. For IMGs, right, me coming from SGU of the Caribbean, being a, um, you know, international it's actually technically foreign international medical graduate. That's why I have my Joanne. If you went to the Caribbean, but you're American, obviously you don't have to click any of these. But if you're from any other country, you have to click either H-1B or J-1 visa. H-1B qualifies once you've completed step three. J-1, like myself, who hasn't completed step three, um, that's where we fall into the category. The only real difference between these two is that J-1 has a um, two-year sort of return of service in your home country. You guys can, you know, look this up more. You can Google J1 versus H1B visa. You'll get tons of resources. So 
the main thing is here, right? Um, if you're US versus IMG. So for me, I personally made sure that any program I was applying to had more than 10%. And look at that. That automatically brings it down to 249 results. Okay, so we went from 500 something to 200. First year salary, don't worry about this. Average work hours, don't worry about this unless you're super picky about these things. I didn't. And even first year positions, I didn't really worry about this. So now that I'm at 249, right? Everyone's, this is going to like, you know, really depend on your budget. I would go into map and you can sort of zoom in here. Zooming in really um, accentuates the, the location and the numbers. So I can see that I have a couple on the West Coast. I have a couple here, uh, a couple on the South as well. Wow, Miami has 10. There's a bunch in New York. So automatically when you do this, you can see which areas are like hubs for IMGs and actually a lot of people and it's IMGs or FIMGs do end up in these exact locations. Uh, California not so much from my own experience but overall. Now I had friends that you know their cutoffs was 5% so let's go to a 5% cutoff right um, now I'm at 282 so that added like a few I believe if I you know remember the other one correctly. 255, 282, that added like about 30 more programs. So just for the sake of this, 5%, you know, I'm at 282 programs. And I can really zoom in using, I love this feature on the map, you know. I mean, my family's from around here, Toronto, you know, Midwest area. There isn't much here. Again, don't be super discouraged. I did get, I did get a few, you know, um, quite a few interviews from programs that apply here. So that's why this is only one, Frida is only one of the many resources that you can use. So I can give you guys a proper example. Let's say, for example, let's click New York because this is where you're interested in, right? Um, I'm just going to pick anything. Let's just pick here um, Griffin Hospital Program, completely random, unrelated. When you click it, you open up Griffin Hospital Program. It shows you location, gives you the address here, a key here. If you want to get in touch with the program, this is the where you're going to get the information, right? This, All of this stuff here, I, I did skim through this. Maybe not for every program when I was applying, but definitely for a, a bunch of them. It also gives you program director's email um, up here as well as down here is going to be program coordinator. Here, I would look, I would usually look at this just to see an idea of the number of positions. So they have 14 first year positions. Here, it shows you, you know, um, applying information, their deadlines, whatever. Some of them do give minimum scores for step one, step two. So you can do this. Again, I didn't focus too much on this just because personal preference. Some people go super tedious into these tasks. The real things I focused on was, okay, is this going to be J1 or not? If you're going to focus on scores and stuff, that's where a Residency Explorer is going to come in and be a bit more useful. For Frida, this was more just double checking that J1 is used or available as well as, you know, looking at the, so this program here has 86% IMGs, you know, 50-50 female-male ratio. So this is what I really looked at. I used Frida for those main things, educational, work environment. I honestly did not even, I didn't bother personally. So this was just me. This is basically what I did. Um, again, let's, for the sake of showing you guys, if I put in family medicine, um, and you know, when I open it up, this is what I would do. And you've got 696, making sure it's residency, location, if you want to double check. Let's put J1. Let's put about 5% IMGs. And looking at 189 programs for FM. Again, I always like looking at the map area. You see like Midwest has a bit more FM front, F IMG friendly um, FM programs. Same thing, I actually got a um, interview from this one here, just close I did. This are being, giving you great information about, you know, their, their academic settings. But the main thing I would look at is positions. Okay, cool, good to know. And right here, just double checking. And then when I come down, I see that, okay, cool, they have 39.1%. So 40, I could probably apply here. This really depends a lot on your geography and a bunch of other requirements that you have. So Frida, my first resource that I used, now of course I learned about this from other upper termers, love this website, love this resource. And again, I would not just stick to Frida just because some things people are, have known to, you know, catch some things are wrong or whatever it is. Then the Residency Explorer. So Residency Explorer, you need to log into your account. And, you know, I, I love this website. I think it was such a great resource for me to use. 
You log into account, it's going to take you to your AAMC, which I'm going to then sign in, which is the same thing as ERAS. Beautiful. Residence Explorer just opened, you know, like I believe literally this week or last week. So here I can go to my profile and let's just, you know, let's make up, let's make up a profile here. How many work experiences? Um, I'll put my own stuff in. I had about three work experiences. How many volunteer experiences I had? I had a lot of volunteer experiences. I would say about 10. How many research experiences? Let's just go two to three. Peer-reviewed publications, I had one, and my applicant, my applicant type was non-US citizen IMG. If you are a Canadian, um, you also fall into this IMG. Of course, if you're from the States and you went to the Caribbean or any other place, you're going to be here, and then this is for AMGs. Then it's going to ask you my standardized exam scores. Which, what scores would you like to use? And we're going to put in US. Then it's going to ask you your latest US MLE Step 1 scores. So... Uh, this you can put in here, I'm keeping it a little bit transparent. I had in you know the upper 220s, low 230s, and then I had about in the 240s for CK. Save and continue, and then it's going to take you and redirect you to right here, the results page. Now here I had already written you know internal medicine, so you can click up here on the right, and you can click what specialty you're applying for. So if I go for categorical IM, and I hit continue, you can pick any one that you're applying for here and it's gonna show you results as they're being calculated. Let's look at the side here. You can click specific states if you want. So if I'm gonna go for New York programs, which I mentioned into, this is gonna show me 53 results for programs here. Again, you can pick region, um, you can put zip code, distance, whatever, and then I'm gonna make sure down here, again, visas accepted or not, um, and I'm gonna hit J1. So there's 41 results I have for just the New York area based on my stats. So here you can click up and down for, you know, program. This is going to go for alphabetical order. If you click here, this is going to show you, you know, from 0% to 100% how many of the match applicants were non-USO FIMGs. And I'm going to put the arrow down, obviously, to see which one I have more chances of matching into. Then these things here, this profile comparison, you can literally click this question mark here and it's going to show you what they mean. This is what I was saying when I mentioned that they're going to sort of show you a percentile. So literally reading this off the screen, the following icons here show how your characteristics compare from their database of 2016 to 2020 applicants who match into each of these programs. I'm looking for ideally here is a plus, which means that I have above number of the, uh, sorry, which means I have an above average range for the match applicants. I want to basically apply for programs that are between these two categories, okay? The dark, the dark circle here and then the plus sign, right? If it's, if it's not shown, that, the, that means the comparison cannot be calculated. So literally anything that you see a question mark on these things, click it, right? I'm going to go back. Let's see here. Um, I'm going to put the arrow down, which is going to show me the most percentage of IMs. And then I'm going to go through and see, okay, let's see how many programs I am in the upper category. Going down, you see that, okay, cool. The FM Health Center and NYU Ling, it's 44% IMGs. And I had above average in the upper 25% of match applicants. I would, I would, I mean, for my purposes, I, I went from middle 50 to upper 25 to above range. I didn't really apply to anything that was lower 25%, but this is up to your discretion. This is just me showing you guys what I did. So Stony Brook, Southampton, even though there's 5% IMGs, I am above average in their step one, step two CK in their research and their volunteer stuff. It also gives you the state, the city and the region in all of this area here. They cool Montefiore, Albert Einstein, the Wakefield campus here. I'm in, you know, I'm in the 50% of applicants in terms of my scores, they have about 70%. So I can click Montefiore. This is just an example, everybody. So it shows you all of the contact information, the program code, which is going to come really handy when you're, you know, um, getting interviews as well as when you're going to put in your ranks. Program director, we have here coordinator's phone and this same thing, it's going to show you positions. It's going to show you um, they participate in ERAS or not, their accreditation status, which is important. And this is what I love here on this it's going to show you application trends. So look at this, a Montefiore in 2020. So this past cycle that I applied to had about 4,967 applicants and they offered 23 positions. And um, there's a little table here for you as well. This just gives you a good idea of the trends that this particular program is looking at. Here, this is what's going to show you 
the comparison of the applicants that have matched. So their current residence data sort of thing, this is what it's going to compare you to. Um, I don't know why it's not showing me step one, step two, but in terms of everything else, this is going to what it's look like. So I have one peer reviewed publication. This is in the middle 50% of the current residence that's, that's been matched into this program. Volunteer experience is 10. That's like I'm ranking in the upper 25%. Work research, so it lets you compare everything. As you go down further, look at this. I have J1, yes, H1B, yes, the OPT program, yes. So this is good. This is a program that I would apply to, and I did apply to this program as well. And I'm also going to show you Honor Society membership. If you notice, if you haven't already noticed a pattern, this is ERAS's portal put into match stats data. All right, if you and let me repeat that again. Everything here, Honor Society membership, scores, your experiences. This is all what's going into your ERAS profile. This is all what's going into your application, right? Well, if, well, as you're working on your application, make sure you check into these programs and see what it is that they're looking for. I didn't really pay much attention on salaries and benefits just because, you know, I, I just wanted to get, make sure I matched into a good place. I would worry about all of that later. For everybody, it's different. You know, people focus on different things. Um, this is going to just talk about practice environment. You also have educational and research opportunities that it talks about, the demographics, backgrounds, training years. It even shows you literally like ethnicity of, of their residents, which I think I, I personally don't think it's that big of a deal. But if somebody wants to look at that, they can. And then here, this is another thing I really, really loved. It's the medical school backgrounds. So look at this. This shows you where everybody came from. So if you're from Ross, you know, fellow Caribbean school, look at that. They have about three, um, you know, people from Ross in their program. If you went from, if you look at this, yo, shout out to Punjab Medical College. Three per people in their program are from Punjab Medical College. It's great. This is another golden, golden thing. Graduates of the residency program, where they applied to or got into after. This program, this website, I mean, is just absolutely amazing. If you guys have questions and, you know, you here, you can go ahead and you can explore programs based without your profile, just literally the same thing except you're exploring, and then you can compare programs as well. So, for example, let's say I want to compare uh, Rochester with the Bassett program, okay? I can click those two here and I can hit compare. It's going to open up and it's going to ask you what characteristics do you want to compare programs to. Okay, let's say I want to compare applicant step one, step two, CK scores, submit. That's all I want to do, okay? Just the example. Um, and then it's going to ask you to download an Excel file that's going to compare these programs, okay? Then you can download your comparison here. So I'm going to let you guys, you know, figure out the works, the tweaks about that. Up here is really great. Again, this is where you're going to click on to change your, um, you know, program application specialty. Here, if you guys help with this, you can literally look at their support hours. Here are the frequently asked questions. Go through that as well if you guys need extra help. So Residency Explorer, loved it. Frida, using Residency Explorer and Frida, two extremely fantastic free websites. Awesome, so moving on into the third resource that I use, let's talk about Matcha Resident. The story of how I came across Matcha Resident, it was through a friend. My honest feelings about it was, it was completely worth the price in my opinion. I was able to triple check at this point because I used Frida at Residency Explorer. Matcha Resident was like my triple check of making sure that this was going to be my final list and I bought two subscriptions at the time so I think I paid around like you know like 140 150 bucks from June to March of using the website I bought the regular subscription which I believe lasts you all the way up till match day so that's quite a number of months for the price. I'm sure it like averages out to like maybe even like 10 bucks a month, which for me, I mean, if I can spend, you know, six bucks on Netflix, I can spend 10 bucks per month on a, on a subscription that's going to help me find programs. I love the rank features this that it had, as well as I personally really liked that in Matcha Residence interface, other students have gone to, that have gone to that specific interview, write their experience about that interview. And actually, speaking of that I went back and I added my experiences for the interviews that I went to afterwards as well so my information and my experiences are on the matcha resident software you go to matcharesident.com this is what you see um you know you can go down and read more about it it's been trusted by over 150,000 IMGs it's been 15 years old so that's super awesome and it tells you a lot about their features that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about is 
really about their features because that's what really drew me into it. So they have a specialty navigator, which helps you. Of course, you pay for a specific specialty. You can always get a package deal, which is all the specialties. Gives you a compatibility score, which I really liked, which sort of, you know, based on your criterias about um, your step scores, your experiences and all that stuff, similar to Residence Explorer, it gives you a compatibility score on how likely you are to, uh, you know, get an interview from that program. They have a comprehensive program cards, which is really like giving your information, visa policies, contact info, additional info about that program itself. And it also shows you how friendly, you see here it says, IMG friendliness, so it shows you how friendly that program is. Also, have a lot of additional features that you can check out. This is the one that I really love, which is the rank assist feature, which helps you generate a score based on your your needs on the programs as you're going through the interview process. And of course, speaking of that, the interview manager. So you guys can read a list all on their website, and they have a ton of other things. One of the things that they recently started is this IMG guide that you can read about more and they have a lot of great things on their blog as well if you hit dashboard here that's where you can sort of make a profile for the website you can go to service overviews which is going to show you overviews about it your benefits the procedure and then this is pricing so i this is the one i did i did the single specialty access regular match season which i see is 79 dollars here you can do all specialties but this is what I did. They also have a post match. This one goes up to February 28th, which is really all I needed. Um, I got two of this, so I spent about, you know, 150 bucks. Um, right now, however, there is a discount code that I can give you guys called VMD15, where you guys can save 15% off of this. And because I'm really bad at my math, you know, 1.5 times 79, it's 11 bucks, 68 bucks for the pricing here, 68 bucks for a single specialty access. I think that's pretty good. And then the full one is 100 bucks and it includes the entire match season. So you can always go to their FAQs if you only ask questions and read more about it. And of course, don't forget to check out their resources about the Caribbean, grads, schools, all of that stuff down below also i'm gonna link you guys the natural resident youtube page because they show you on the page how to use their software um the different features that they have as well as you know they, they show you screen share as well like i did in this video so be sure to check them out that's all i have for this video everybody i hope this sort of helps everyone want to reach out for more questions or comments all of my bio is in the description box below Comment, like, subscribe, and please share to other students and applicants that would benefit from this. Cheers! So I just moved to my place in New York City, which is where I'm filming this. This is my first video in the new place, and I'm super excited. Can't wait for you guys to be in this position. It's an unreal feeling. You're going to get here. You're going to get into this exact same position soon. I believe in you.